Hello everyone, welcome back from our break. We're gonna go on to chapter two of Skunk and Badger. Um, where we left off is where um, Badger, a rock scientist, lives by himself and then he gets an unexpected knock at the door and it's Skunk. And he thinks he's a salesman when he comes to find out that Aunt Lulu, which is Badger's aunt, um, invited the Skunk to stay there as a roommate and Badger didn't know about this because he felt bad that he didn't open any of his letters from his aunt previously to tell him that he was having a visitor stay with him. So he decided to take Skunk in as a roommate. So we are on chapter two. Consider yourself my special guest. Badger plucked the red suitcase from Skunk's grasp with one paw and took firm hold of Skunk's elbow with the other. He steered Skunk away from the front door. Here we are. Badger stopped at the end of the hallway. With a dramatic sweep, he gestured at a folding door. He set down the suitcase, pulled open the door, and tugged a chain. The bulb flickered on. Ta-da! My special guest closet. There's even a place for belongings. Badger patted the shelf above. Skunk squinted into the closet, taking into the luggage rack bed with t-shirt bedding and bald athletic sock pillow. The bulb hummed fluorescently. Oh, said Skunk finally. He paused and pointed to the stairs. Aren't, aren't there rooms up there like on the second floor? Aunt Lulu told me. Never, Badger interrupted. He leapt into the center of the hallway. I couldn't, no, wouldn't do that to you. You are my special guest. You deserve to stay in my special guest closet. Skunk leaned to see up the stairs. He looked up at Badger. He glanced into the closet and then at his suitcase. Finally, he shrugged. Okay. Good, said Badger. Skunk brushed off his paws. That is settled. Now please tell me where the neighborhood chickens congregate. I would like to make their acquaintance. Skunk paused and then added, I will need that key to the brownstone. Chickens have no sense of time. I have known some very late chickens and I would not want to wake you up by coming in late. Chickens? There aren't any chickens in this neighborhood. As he said, Badger remembered the chicken he had seen from the stoop. Ha! You're funny. Even I know there are a lot of chickens in this neighborhood. I have seen three. And when I just got here, Skunk picked up his red suitcase and plunked it on top of the luggage rack bed. The bed toppled, the light went out. Unpack it comfortable, I'll find the spare key, Badger called over his soldier, shoulders as he sprinted up the stairs. It did not take Badger long to find the spare key. He pawned, he pawed the key over to Skunk and raced back upstairs to his bedroom. Mail pail now. In his mail pail, Badger found four letters, four letters from Aunt Lulu. The first letter was all this and that and the other thing. Badger tossed it into the trash bin. The second letter, letter um, in its way through most of the page, and then the word appeared skunk. Badger gulped, backed up, and read the sentence he skated by. Aunt Lulu had met skunk. She had been such good friends with skunk's mother. Badger torn to the third envelope, shook out the paper, and read, read, read. The entire third level letter, all five pages of it, prattled on about skunk and skunk's mother. It ended, what would you think of Skunk moving into the brownstone? I'm sure you will like him. Please respond as soon as possible. A muttering began. Did not respond. Certainly did not respond. What have I done? Badger was so distressed, he tore the fourth letter in half. And after taping the two halves back together, he finally read it. Dear Badger, I'm sending Skunk to the brownstone. Please welcome him. He is a delight. As I did for you, I've given Skunk permission to stay in my brownstone for as long as he'd like. Give him a big room on the second floor and keys to come and go. He'll be a wonderful roommate. I hope this arrangement doesn't come as a shock. In a previous letter, I asked you for your thoughts and have heard nothing. I would wait for a reply, but Skunk's living conditions is precarious, so I will take your lack of response as agreement. I expect you're busy with important rock work. It makes me smile to think that you and Skunk together. I look forward to the news of your adventures. Hugs, Aunt Lulu. Roommate, room on the second floor? Stay as long as he likes? Badger groaned and flopped belly first onto his bed. He flipped over, stared at the ceiling and thought, as she did for me. He clenched and unclenched the bedding in his paw. He turned his head to take in his rock scientist diploma and his three blue ribbons hanging on the wall. Badger had been a rock scientist in need of funding. He did important rock work. What did the skunk bring to the brownstone? A chicken whistle? Whatever that was, Badger wasn't falling for it. Also, Badger's suitcase latched on its own. It didn't require twine. Not everyone wants a skunk, the skunk had said. 
and got that right. <clears throat> Badger spent that evening in his bedroom. When bedtime came, he tossed and turned and stared at the ceiling. There was one thing he could do, he said finally. Badger rolled off the bed, crawled to the closet, pulled out the case, and unlatched. Ukulele, he whispered as he tucked its koala wood body under his elbow. He took a deep breath and plucked. Fing, sounded the ukulele. Badger sighed. He plucked another string. Fing, he sighed again. He ran a claw over four strings. Fing, ding, a ling, bing. The sound rang out. Hastily, Badger clapped a paw over the ukulele sound hole. Shh, he whispered. Still, he plucked the bottom string one more time. Fing. Gently, Badger set the ukulele back in the case, latched the latches, click, click, and slid in the back of the closet. The fing stayed with him as he climbed into bed. Wrapped in the ring around the note, Badger slept. The next morning, Badger woke to smell of eggs, onions, and cinnamon, Badger mumbled. A dream, thought Badger. In his kitchen, one thing, and one thing only awaited him. Cold cereal and a cold bowl with cold milk again. He turned over his bed, in his bed, took a deep breath and smelled definitely cinnamon. Then he remembered that fellow, that skunk. Badger's eyes popped open. He smelled something else, burning. He sniffed again, burning, coughing. Badger leapt from his bed, fire, fire. Badger yelled as he raced down the stairs. Skunk ran out of the kitchen. He held pepper clamped in tongs over his head. Fire, fire, where? Skunk skittered right and looked. Skunk skittled left. The pepper at the end of Skunk's tongs trailed a long, thin line of smoke. Skunk followed Badger's gaze. Ha! He jabbed the air with his pepper. This, this is not fire. This is fire roasted. It is breakfast. Breakfast, said Badger, as Skunk and the pepper disappeared back into the kitchen. Badger stood stunned at the bottom of the stairs. Breakfast for me too? He listened to the sounds coming from the kitchen. The vent hood whooshed on. Should have turned that on sooner, he heard Skunk say. Pans and pots clanked. Something hit something else and sizzled. Something was shaken. The faucet turned on and off, and Skunk whistled a tune. The air around Badger was thick with smells, savory and sweet, buttery, toasty, and grilled. If he were, I'm sorry, um, but being a badger, he tipped Claude to the kitchen for a weary peek. From the doorway, Badger stared. The kitchen looked cozy, welcoming even. Candlelight flickered on the kitchen table. Two places were set with placemats, cloth napkins and napkin reins, a fork and a knife. Nothing matched. One napkin was purple and dotted. The other was plaid and half-finished candle had been stuck into a bottle covering with wax drippings, but Badger found it delightful. Skunk whirred to the stove, the counter, back to the stove, the sink, the kitchen table, and returned to the stove. He spotted Badger in the doorway. Come in, come in, come in. Skunk jabbed a spatula in the direction of the chair. Sit, breakfast soon. The skunk scraped furiously at something in a fry pan. Badger sat down. The scraping stopped and skunk marched over to Badger. He put his paws on his hips and said, I am not a baby cow. You are not a baby cow. I will not insult your palate with baby cow food. Have you ever met a baby cow? Slugs are better conversationalists, but never fear. You will like your breakfast, hot chocolate fine without baby cow milk. Breakfast hot chocolate? Badger did not think he would have trouble drinking breakfast hot chocolate. He was about to say this, but Skunk had already crossed the room in the kitchen counter. He tossed something in a bowl with a big spoon. Skunk picked up the bowl, gave it a shake, and a small potato shot across the room. Rocket potato, watch out, yelled Skunk. Ha 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 ha, Skunk said, and Badger laughed. Their eyes met, and they grinned at one another. And then Skunk nodded seriously. I will get rocket potato later. The bowl clunked back onto the counter, and Skunk continued to cook. A few minutes later, Skunk laid a plate of scrambled eggs and fire roasted peppers in front of Badger. Badger knew what to do next. He forked it up, put it in his mouth, and mmm. Skunk shook out a napkin, tuck this under your chin. Badger tucked the napkin under his chin and forked up some eggs. Mmm-hmm. Thereafter, following the promised breakfast hot chocolate, yes, and a basket of strawberry cinnamon muffins, a basket, after everything else came roasted fingerling, fingerling potatoes. Skunk apologized for the potatoes coming late. I get the eating order wrong sometimes, but with breakfast, I don't mind terribly. Breakfast is the nicest meal. Badger nodded vigorously. Skunk continued, because breakfast is the nicest meal, you should have a candlelight for breakfast, if at all possible. Sometimes, if not possible. Sometimes you're eating where there is not a candle. 
or sometimes there is a candle shortage and no one has candles. That is sad, particularly for breakfast. And here is a picture of Badger and Skunk having breakfast together under the candle, or with the candlelight. You can see it. And it says underneath here, breakfast is the nicest meal. Okay. Yes, mmm, said Badger, hiding his mouthful with paw. Skunk clapped his paws. I knew it. We are much alike. You will be, we will be good roommates. Then with Skunk at one end of the table and Badger at the other end, they turned to their plates and ate. Badger was in his fourth muffin, fifth muffin, sixth, when he realized that things had gone silent and the candle had snuffed out. Badger looked up from his plate. Skunk was not at his spot at the kitchen table. He surveyed the room. Skunk was not in front of the stove. Bowls, plates, a cutting board, and cooking doodads and gizmos littered the counters. Something oozed off a fry pan off once on a burner. No one was cleaning up. Then an image of a small potato streaking across the kitchen blazed through Badger's mind. Rocket potato, watch out, Skunk had said. Badger glanced over his shoulder and saw the potato. Rocket potato was a small yellow and now claimed the corner. Badger decided he did not, look the, did not like the look of potatoes in corners, even rocket potatoes. Badger grabbed a muffin from the basket and was surprised to find it was the last muffin. How many muffins had he eaten? Badger took a bite and chewed. His chewing sounded loud. Where is exactly Skunk? Badger swallowed and listened, and then he heard it, a thumping. The sound came from the second floor. And here's the rock potato in the corner. All right, that is the end of chapter two. So we are gonna find out why, why is Skunk upstairs? Or, you know, what's he doing up there? If we know that it is him because we heard the thumping. All right, friends, till next time. I hope you enjoyed chapters one and two so far. We're gonna go on to chapter three on another video and I hope you watch it and continue the story. All right, have a good one, friends, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.